Hello students! For today's video, I will be discussing a little about what we call Gay Lusak's Law. So by the way, um, this is not included in the videos that I have originally in my YouTube account because uh, this is not part of the milks, yung recent milks natin due to the pandemic, tinanggal siya pero dati kasama naman siya dun sa aming curriculum. Kaya hindi ko siya nadidiscuss masyado. But then there are some people who requested me to discuss Gay Lusak's Law. Which as you can see now, it shows a pressure and temperature relationship. So later on, I will explain yung mga mangyayari kapag tumaas si pressure, kapag tumaas si temperature. But then, this law is very much similar to Charles' law. So, kung hindi nyo pa napapanood yung discussion ko about Charles' law, I have placed the link above so you can re review it. It is combined with Boyle's law kasi yun yung nakalagay sa aming modules sa grade 10. So, let's start. So, what is the general form for Gay Lusak's law? Sabi ko nga kanina, it is very similar with Charles' law. So, it relates pressure and temperature using the formula P1 over T1 is equal to P2 over T2. Where of course, P would stand for pressure and T would stand for your temperature. Ngayon, ano ba yung mga mahalagang kailangan nating tandaan dyan? What are the subscripts? What do they mean? When we say number one, usually this is referring to the initial state. So, yung start. Alright. And then, yung two, yun naman yung final. Or yung end. You have to analyze the problem kung alin doon yung initial and final. For you to be able to answer a problem successfully, you need to be able to identify the correct given and make sure that you follow yung tinatawag natin na gresa. Given, required, equation, solution, answer. Unless you are very confident with your math skills, pwede mo siyang derechohin. But if you are not confident, then you have to do it step by step. So going back to our equation, we have P1 over T1 is equal to P2 over T2. Ano yung mga mahalaga natin kailangan tandaan? Pressure uh, must be expressed in, of course, pressure units. But then we are not really strict about the units. Kasi, alimbawa, the problem uses atmospheres. Automatic atmospheres na rin yung isa mo pang pressure. So, ano ba yung mga usual na unit natin dyan? Pwedeng atmospheres, pwedeng tor, pwedeng millimeter mercury, pwedeng kilopascals. Hindi tayo mahigpit dyan unless the problem states na kailangan yung answer mo naka-express at a particular unit. Sa temperature, dito tayo mahigpit because your temperature must be in Kelvin. There are some cases when your temperature given is in degrees Celsius. So, you have to convert that into Kelvin. Now, what is our conversion factor? Tandaan po natin, Kelvin temperature can be obtained by just adding 273 to degrees Celsius. Sa mga college books, they use 273.15 Pero right now, in our discussion, we will just be using 273. So it is very important that you convert the temperature to Kelvin kung hindi siya Kelvin. Pero kung Kelvin na yung given, hindi na kailangang mag-convert. Alright? Relationships. According to Gay-Lussac's law, pressure... And temperature are directly proportional as long as your volume and your amount of substance, they are constant. So, yan ang sinasabi ng 
gay low sex law. So, what do we mean by directly proportional? Kapag rinaf natin yan, pressure, temperature, you will be arriving at a graph like this. It means that if you increase the temperature, your pressure must increase. Similarly, if temperature decreases, your pressure also decreases. So, why am I emphasizing these relationships? Because if you are doing a quick calculation, you can always go back to these relationships para malaman ninyo agad kung tama o mali ang inyong sagot. So, for example, yung temperature ninyo tumaas, dapat yung pressure nyo tataas din. Kung ang computation ninyo sa pressure bumaba kahit tumaas naman si temperature, that means there is something wrong with your solving. So, let's start with our problems. I will be discussing here two problems only. Let me write the gresa. Yung tinatawag natin na gresa. Given, required, equation, And then, solution and answer. So, pasensya na po sa aking sulat ha kasi medyo nanginginig tayo. Let's read the problem. A cylinder of gas has a pressure of 4.40 atmospheres at 25 degrees Celsius. At what temperature in degrees Celsius will it reach a pressure of 6.50 atmospheres? If we analyze the problem, medyo mahaba to. Why? Kasi you have the temperature in degree Celsius. So naturally, if you are listening to what I have said a while ago, you have to convert this to Kelvin first. And then makakakuha kayo ng sagot in Kelvin. And then you have to convert it back to degree Celsius. Pero let's do it step by step. Given mo na tayo. A cylinder of gas has a pressure of 4.40 atmospheres. So, that would be your P1. At temperature of 25 degrees Celsius, we add 273. And what do we get? We will be getting 298 Kelvin. And then, our final pressure is this 6.50 atmosphere. We are looking for a temperature but make sure it must be in degree Celsius. Let's write the equation here. P1 over T1 is equal to P2 over T2. Um, actually, yung mga problems na related sa Charles Law and Gay Lussac's Law, medyo tricky siya kapag nawawala si temperature kasi nasa baba siya. You have to do a lot of rearrangements. Now, if you are not really used to deriving equations, baka may chance na magkamali ka. So, for some of my students, what I advise is to flip the equation. Siguraduhin na yung nawawala ay nasa numerator. So, in our case, ang missing natin is T2. Okay. So, ang gagawin natin, pwede nating baligta rin yung equation. Magiging T1 over P1 is equal to T2 over P2. Just don't forget that what you do on the left, you must also do on the right para hindi ka malilito. Yan. So, naayos na natin yung ating equation. Let's write the solution. So, what is T1? That would be 298 Kelvin over the P1. That's 440 atmospheres over T2 equals T2 over 6.50 atmospheres. Ayan. Para mawala itong nasa denominator, mag-multiply tayo ng 
6.50 atmospheres, both sides. Therefore, our T2 would be 298 Kelvin times 6.50 atmospheres over 4.40 atmospheres. May kita natin makakancel yung atmospheres dyan. Then, let's use our calculator. So, T2 is equal to 440.23 Kelvin. But wait, there's more. Sabi natin, at what temperature in degree Celsius? Dahil given ka ng temperature in Kelvin, kailangan mong ibalik sa degree Celsius. To do that, we subtract 273 and we will be getting... 167.23 degrees Celsius. And that would be our answer. Quick analysis lang. Sabi natin kanina, directly proportional si pressure at si temperature. So, dahil tumaas si pressure, dapat tataas din si temperature. Okay. Let's move to our next problem. Mylar balloon is filled with helium gas to a pressure of 107 kilopascals when the temperature is 22 degrees Celsius. If the temperature changes to 45 degrees Celsius, what will be the pressure of the helium in the balloon? So again, the temperature increased from 22 to 45. So we will be expecting our answer to be greater than 107 kilo pascals. Let me write the given parts of Gresa. Ayan, so magsulat na tayo ng given. Ang given natin, pressure 1 is equal to 107 kilopascals. T1 is 22 degrees Celsius. If we add 273 there, that is 298 Kelvin. And T2 is 45 degrees Celsius. We do the same. Add 273. That would be 318 Kelvin. Oops. 22 plus 273 is... I'm mistaken. This is 295 Kelvin. And 45 plus 273 is still 318. So, anong hinahanap? Pressure of the helium in the balloon, P2. Our formula for Gay-Lussac's law is P1 over T1 is equal to P2 over T2. P2 is already in the numerator, so we don't need to flip the equation. We simply substitute. So, 107 kilopascals over 295 Kelvin is equal to P2 times 318 Kelvin. To simplify, we multiply both sides by 318 Kelvin. So therefore, our P2 is equal to 107 kilopascals times 318 Kelvin 
divided by 295 Kelvin. So our answer is 115 kilo pascals. So there you go. That's all for our short discussion today. I hope this has helped you understand your modules better. And please like and subscribe my videos if you have time. Or you can also share that to your classmates or friends. So see you next time. Bye.